Pastor promise Omidera to please come for the opening prayer. Please let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you for bringing this day to pass. Because no one fixed a date and it will come to pass except the Lord himself has commanded it. We return all the glory to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you take preeminence in the proceedings of today in the name of Jesus. We ask for strength for the lecture of the day. We ask for utterance and depth in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of it all, Almighty God, let your name alone be glorified. Cause the joy of each one of us to be full. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Amen. The Covenant University Band, give us the CU anthem. Thank you, CU Ban. Please, we may be seated. As we establish the protocol for this 15th inaugural lecture of Covenant University, the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedekbo, the Vice President of Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedekbo, as team members of the Board of Regents here present, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor A. A. Tyro, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, other Principal Officers of Covenant University, Deans of Colleges and School of Postgraduate Studies, members of the Covenant University Senate, the inaugural lecturer for today, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, kings and queens in Hebron, Members of the praise, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today we are having the 15th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. 
At this point, I would like to invite the registrar, Dr. Olumuiwa Oluda, to please come for the introduction of the key officers of the university. The registrar, please. The Chancellor Covenant University. I'd like to introduce to this audience today the key officers of the Covenant University gracing this 15th inaugural lecture. We have the Dean of Students, Dr. Timothy Anake, the Chaplain Covenant University, Pastor Promise Omidiora, the Director of Physical Planning and Development, Architect Binga Alalade. The Director, Center for Learning Resources, Dr. Jerome Ijegbenyose. The Director of Financial Services, Pastor Sunday Raymond. The Dean of the College of Science and Technology, Professor Kolawole Ajanoku. The Dean of the College of Business and Social Sciences, Professor Philip Alege. The Dean of the College of Engineering, Professor Christian Bolu, here with Professor Orodu. The host dean of this inaugural lecture, the dean of the College of Leadership Development Studies, Professor Amos Alao. The dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Samuel Wara, here represented by Professor Abiodun Adebayo. The deputy vice chancellor, Professor Shalom Chinedu. The Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor A.A.A. Atayero. Very shortly, we will be unveiling the details of the strength of the intellectual capacity of the inaugural lecturer of today. But just to us to recognize her, she's here, so our expectations will not be cut short. Professor Isaiah Obaya is here. The Vice President of Education, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo. And then our Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Regents of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo. I trust that as we have sat here, we will be living with nudgets in our hands to rewrite the story of leadership in Nigeria and indeed influence Africa for the future that is enviable for the world. You're welcome. I'd like us right now to receive the Vice Chancellor, Professor Atayero. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Covenant University, Dr. David Hoyedepo. The Vice President of Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Hoyedepo. The members of Regents of Covenant University here present. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to observe the protocol has just been established. Today's inaugural lecture, aptly titled, Lightning Courts and Strengthening Stakes, Leadership Praxis and Transcendence in Counseling Practice, is the 15th in the series of Covenant inaugural lectures, and the fifth this academic semester. Globally, universities are considered as citadels where solutions to societal problems emanate to help improve the quality of life, it is the function of universities to help steer the way to the future through creation of new knowledge and development of novel ideas. A university, therefore, that fails to lead in this respect becomes irrelevant, falling short in our service to the contextual society and the humanity at large. We all know that inaugural lectures provide universities and the professorate a unique platform for disseminating development-oriented knowledge arising from the research they do and by so doing fulfill their obligations to the society. 
the inaugural lecture of this day, highlights the values embedded in the African family system that should be strengthened and harnessed in our quest for national development. Indeed, the extensive African family system is a model of developmental networks that connects people at various levels to strengthen national ideals and values in fostering responsible and responsive citizens, leadership, and institutions. It is common knowledge that one of the major impediments of Africa's development is visionary leadership. A philosopher once said that a people is worthy of its leaders. Fundamentally, therefore, the family system is the building block of societies and remarkably defines the ideal and values orientation of leaders in government and institutions. Consequently, there is a clear on call for diligent attention to be paid to the family unit and child training by all and sundry. Moreover, today's lecture signposts a proven leadership model that is based on spirituality and embedded with the potency to rescue our nation and continent from leadership quagmire that we're currently in. Here at Covenant, our mandate is raising a new generation of leaders through a qualitative and life applicable training system that focuses on value and skill development. As such, we are at the forefront of nurturing a unique crop of leaders that are not only visionary, but also committed to the service of humanity. It is to this end, both our undergraduate and postgraduate students are imparted with our core values our core value of spirituality, possibility mentality, capacity building, integrity, responsibility, diligence, and of course, sacrifice. We are conscious that character is the anchor of leadership. In addition to the respective academic curricula and other constant built courses, such as the total man concept, the entrepreneurial development studies, the students undertake certification programs in leadership development. All these are geared towards turning out graduates that are total, mentally resourceful, intellectually reinforced, enterprisingly self-dependent, uh, futuristically visionary, and responsibility sensitive to the dictates of leadership role they are destined to play in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it is on this note I wish to welcome you to what promises to be a very thought-provoking lecture to be delivered by none other than the first professor of Covenant University and the second substantive vice chancellor of the university, a distinguished academic and administration per excellence none other than our own dear Professor Isaac O'Brien. You are welcome. The Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the hour has come for us to unveil the inaugural lecturer for today a seasoned academic and university administrator, a seasoned and distinguished daughter of Africa. May I invite someone who has worked with her over the years closely to please come for the citation of our inaugural lecturer. I'd like to at this point invite Professor Charles Ogulogu for the citation. Chancellor, sir, any time we have an assembly of egos, there is a convocation. Today is one such event 
I'll have the privilege and honor to be doing the assignment of introducing the inaugural lecturer for today. May I request Professor Azubayo, today's inaugural lecturer, to please stand. Can we put our hands together for her, please? The year 1960 is certainly a great year for Africa. It was the year Nigeria got liberation from the colonial shackles of Britain. But seven months earlier to the exact date of that independence, God himself gave the world a pre-independence gift. That was the birth of an Amazon. She is endued with the spirit of excellence, forthrightness, diligence, resourcefulness, and of course she's God-fearing. She is a daughter of Africa. I am talking about Professor Oloibe Imogume Obayo. Born to the family of grateful parents, Sir Frank and Lady Miriam Imohome in Edo State, Nigeria, Aizu Obanyo is a child of destiny who has continued to walk predestined paths, letting herself lose in the service of God and humanity. As a young girl with keen eyes and a feverish pension for contributions, Achievement and intellectual adventure, Professor Aizu Obanyo never failed to leave a golden ribbon in anything she touched her hands on. She knows the value of work, service, and contribution as primary determinants to anyone's claim to success. Her legacy is partly in her investment in others and the desire to see perfection as something within the realm of the human existence and imagination. Professor Isaac Bayo's life, education, work, and personality were never products of faith, but a product of faith, the one we practiced in the church. And certainly not by chance or luck. She walked a path and did a talk by choice and took preceding steps that defined her personality and the remaining steps she will ever take. It's often and correctly said, you are a product of your earlier exposures and education and that a child definitely shows the woman Professor Isaac Obanyo is therefore a product of good home training and good education. She attended, among others, the famous St. Maria Goretti Girls Secondary School, Benicete, St. Leonard's School for Girls, St. Andrew's Five, Scotland for her A-levels in, in England, a school which has nurtured many women and internationally reputable people like her, as we are celebrating today. On her return from the United Kingdom, Professor Isaac Banyo gained admission to the University of Benin for her Bachelor of Education in English degree. That was between 1979 and 1982. Her English background is part of that divine preparation for a future at the global stage, Professor Isaac Banyo's English is impeccable. Listening to her is like waking up and waking an uppers with a nightingale on the stage. After, you can do it. After her mandatory national youth service call deployment in Kano State was over in 1983, she took a dramatic step that defined her personality 
and the remaining changes that will culminate and we celebrate today. She got admission into the University of Illinois, not to study English anyway, but to study guidance and counseling. And to prove the validity of girls leading and working pretty thin parts, she earned her master's and a doctorate degrees in guidance and counseling in record time, that is in 1984 and 1987, respectively. That was a time when such feats were not common in this part of the world. Professor Isobayo did not just become a professor and a leading voice in the discipline overnight. She played her path and most importantly paid her dues. Her career in, academ in the academia began as an assistant lecturer at the University of Illinois in 1986. She rose through the ranks, becoming a reader that is associate professor at the same university in 1995. Today, Professor Isobayo is a professor of counseling with specialization in multicultural aspects of human behavioral disposition. And if impact is a factor, leadership could easily be added to her areas of strength and inquiry. Professor Isaac Bayer often tells her mentees that wherever the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. That's actually a Chinese proverb. That is to signpost the fact that everything works according to design and order for the global role she has to play, uh, she, she only continues to play, is referring to higher education and leadership in Africa. Professor Isaac Bayo was prepared by God intentionally and internationally to assume any role at any time. Her famous departure to the United Kingdom on sabbatical from the University of Illinois was therefore a divine order. During the United Kingdom experience, Professor Isaac Bayo lectured at the University of Rohantum, United Kingdom, as a senior lecturer in counseling psychology between 1996 and 1999, before returning home with her family again. By divine direction, of course, the following off from this move led to her appointment as a professor of counseling at Covenant University in 2002. That appointment changed her life and testimony as she went on to serve at the highest level of university administration, becoming the second substantive vice chancellor of the university. <laughs> Professor Isaac Bayo is never known to be afraid to trade on charted paths on venture into the so-called areas where men take preeminence. She had blazed a trail on several occasions, culminating in her appointment, as I mentioned earlier, as the first female vice chancellor of Governor University. On February 1, just about one month and three days to her 45th birthday. By the appointment, Professor Isobayo became the second substantive vice chancellor of Governor University the third substantive female vice chancellor in, in the history of Nigerian tertiary education, and the first, however, on the private university platform. She served as the vice chancellor of Landmark University between 2015 to 2017. She joined the exclusive club of very few Nigerian academics who have had to serve as vice chancellors of two universities. Others, others in this exclusive club include Professors Ibida Kobe and Chinedu Nebo, who was a former minister of power. She has studied very consi consistently under the leadership of Dr. David Oyedepo. And during the 10th Founders Day celebration and announcement of Professor Isaac Banyo, successor as Vice Chancellor, the Chancellor observed that on her appointment as Vice Chancellor, that instead of clearing her wardrobes for new arrivals in terms of apparels and clothes, as many 
women and men would do at her level. Rather, what she did was to order a new set of bookshelves. She bought books on leadership and consumed herself in the quest for a new brand of leadership that would take Africa to the next steps. In, in eight academic sessions as vice chancellor, Professor Isaac O'Brien mentored many, catered for many, sought to be of the service to all. Through those years as vice chancellor, Professor Isaac O'Brien was privileged to work with the chancellor and visionary of Governor University, Dr. David Oyedekbo, a man whose commitment to excellence and to the restoration of the dignity of the black man and uh, the apotheosis of the African story continues to serve as the main inspiration of the Governor University vision. And Isa Bayo, with her personal history, will always be part of this trajectory. She shares with the Chancellor the belief that Governor University is just at the beginning of the quest for the ultimate prize, and that is to establish it as a world-class university, producing graduates and researchers who will be leaders in the face of endeavor. It is therefore not surprising that a remarkable performance as Vice Chancellor has earned her accolades, awards, recognitions, and many other things all around the world. The price for hard work we know is more work. Like the bishop would say, it's always more work and more work. After a successful eight-year tenure as Vice Chancellor of Governor University, Professor Isaac Banyo served as Education Secretary of the Education Commission, Living Faith Church Worldwide, where she oversaw the running of over 100 primary schools, that's the Kingdom Heritage Model Schools in Nigeria and abroad, 14 secondary schools, that's the Faith Academy Network of Schools, and two flagship universities of the Commission, Covenant and Landmark. Professor Isaac Banyo currently serves as the director of African Leadership Development Center, Governor University, Ota, Nigeria, where she provides leadership, strategic directions, and along with her team, manages the African Leadership Development Center as driven by the visionary Dr. David Oyedeko, Chancellor of Governor University. On the academic platform, Professor Isaac Banyo, as a professor of counseling psychology, specialized in multicultural aspects of counseling and has been involved in extensive work in developing curricula for leadership development studies and personal development programs. She has also been involved in many leadership development projects. She's involved in the development, teaching, and research in the area of new leadership paradigms for Africa. She's working to sustain contextually relevant conversations pertinent to empowering leadership Praxis in Africa. She currently convenes the African Development Studies Program at Governor University and also a member of the Council of the Nigerian Institute of Management Chartered and National Universities Commission and AUC Strategic Advisory Committee, which was established to drive the reposition of university education in Nigeria. She has also been involved in extensive research in the areas of maternal acceptance, rejection, and children's behavioral dispositions. Her research also spans family systems with particular reference to the extended and extensive family systems and its impact on the counseling practice. Her other research involvements are in the areas of prevalence and pattern of sustenance, use, psychosocial correlates of alcohol, tobacco, and cannabis used in Nigeria. She has also supervised doctoral thesis in the areas of HIV and AIDS. At the professional levels, Professor Isaac Banyo registered and was duly certified a member of the Council Association of Nigeria in 1986. She also received her grade three certificate in, in spoken English in 1978 from the London Academy of Music and um, Dramatic Arts. And by 1979, the same London Academy awarded her grade one certificate in spoken English. This she did with a distinction. She was a member of the African Network 
for the prevention and protection of child abuse and neglect, and served as acting chairperson for the Quarter State chapter while she lived in the lorry. She is a member of Nigerian Institute of Management as well as a distinguished member of Council of the Institute. And recently, in 2016, she was meritoriously awarded the Leadership and Integrity Award by the Black Heritage Magazine. Professor Isa Bayo is a firm believer in lifelong learning, especially building and continuous relevance. This is the major reason for her academic and professional career and her educational trajectory have spanned higher educational and original context in Nigeria and the United Kingdom with emphasis on the areas of human communication, patterns, group dynamics, life skills, development of multicultural innovations, societal and uh, emotional intelligence, with extensive experience in running human groups and skills development workshops, both in Nigeria and in the UK. The inaugural lecturer for today, Professor Isa Bayo, is an award-winning scholar, leader, and administrator. She has won numerous awards, among which are Nigerian Association of Petroleum Explorationists NAPE Shell Award in November 2005, National Universities Commission Best Vision Solar Award in 2006 for private universities, and the National Association of Women Academics Special Award in 2006. Professor Bayer is a family-centered woman who continues to practice inclusive family ethics and values. She was her husband's delight, helpmate, and confident. She was married to late engineer Adetu Kumbo Uche Chiobayo, a leadership consultant, and their marriage is blessed with two wonderful children who have continued to use her as a mentor, mother, and role model. Talking about leadership, family, dynamics, and the power to become, Professor Bayo has always woven an indelible story of possibilities. In many ways, she has become the fabric upon which many have woven and written their own stories of awakening, their own stories of becoming. She has become a remarkable metaphor for what could happen if people anywhere recognized that they are powerful beyond measure, magnificent beyond expectation, and bigger than their old fables would suggest. Her daughter's inspiring life and the man she sees in her young son are remarkable, remarkable reminders of God's infinite grace upon her life and work. Despite the departure of her husband of 28 years, Professor Isobanyo's faith in God remains indubitable. She knows that the future is for those who are with him and believes that one spiritual well-being must be backed by a life of continuous and lifelong learning, capacity building, and contribution to humanity, no matter where or the circumstances one finds him or herself. The Chancellor said in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I have this privilege to present to you today a woman of God the handmaiden of God herself, a proud daughter of Zion, daughter of Africa, a teacher of teachers, the professor's professor, a counselor, an achiever, a proud working mother and wife, Professor Isaiah Oloibe. Imokume Obaya. Yes, we will rise up to receive her. Ma, you're welcome. Can we sustain applause, please? We may please be seated. The 
Chancellor and Chair Board of Regents of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedekpo, sir. Our dear, my dear mommy, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedekpo, Vice President Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, the Vice Chancellor, Covenant University, Professor A.A.A. Atairo, other principal officers of our noble and highly esteemed Covenant University, the alma mater of a rising generation. I must say today that I am filled with awe and I can't begin to imagine the number of faces that I'm seeing right in the hall. And I stand here today giving all glory unto God. Standing here few days back, few months back would have been impossible. But today I remember the words of the psalmist, Psalm 40 to be precise, verses 1 to 3. I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry. He brought me out of the miry clay. He established me, put my foot against the rock, and put a new song in my mouth. And today I'm able to stand before all of you. At a point in time, it looked like everything was crumbling. Everything was falling apart. And then God stood, made a way, and just like the song of Travis Green, he made a way. Standing here today, wondering whether I'll be able to go through all of this, God made a way. And that is why I'm able to stand before all of you today, returning all glory, all honor, all praise unto him. I want to thank you all for coming. And I welcome you again to Covenant University. And I'd like to say that by the grace of God, nothing is impossible. And we are standing here, sitting here today only because God is here. To him be all the glory. Why the 15th inaugural lecture and why at this time I was announced as the first professor of Covenant University, but never, nothing ever takes God by surprise. And we remember the words of the of words expressed in Ecclesiastes 9:11 that everything is ordered divinely ordered by God, and the times and the events of our lives are as He defines it. And so, noting also the scriptural biblical symbolism of the number 15 which talks about grace and divine perfection of the Trinity. Today's inaugural lecture is therefore drawn from wellsprings of divine inspiration. I must say that it was right in this hall in the course of a chapel service that the Lord led me to Isaiah 54 where the title of this particular lecture, Lengthening Stakes and Strengthening Chords, was drawn from. And so this is a divinely inspired paper. I'm giving this lecture right now, noting that in 2003, I gave my public lecture, Family Systems, Cultural Dynamics, and Counseling Outcomes, The African Paradigm, in 2003, few months after I had been announced as professor of Covenant University. And I'd like to say that coming from a stock where going by academic traditions is very important, professors are meant to profess and you do not begin to profess no matter what without presenting your inaugural lecture. And so even though the inaugural lecture platform had not been rolled out. We had the public lecture platform rolled out at that time. I gave my public lecture right on the 9th of July, 2003, and that was given along the order and lines of inaugural lectures, talking about my research, 
talking about my findings and also what the future parts would hold. And this is the reason why even 15 plus years later after that first announcement, having done that, and by privilege of other assignments, having also hosted a number of inaugural lectures, this is only just happening. Again, I appreciate God that this privilege has been given. The Chancellor, sir, I want to give all the glory to God and appreciate you for all that you have put in to make sure that this is happening at this time. The Lord bless you, sir. My doctoral thesis on maternal acceptance, rejection, and children's behavioral dispositions, a cross-ethnic comparison of children in Nigeria led to the emergence of a defined area of focus as I begin to put in place and put in track my academic and professional journeys. It's important for us to be able to define where we are coming from, what are the things that have actually set us in line, put us on track. All of these things in the, lives of an, in the life of an academic are really important. And looking back at my childhood, also finding out what actually put me right on this pathway the multicultural paradigm. I want to know that as a young child traveling both nationally and internationally, I got exposed to people of diverse cultures and also reading a number of books. And I remember also one of the programs I was privileged to organize in the Scottish A-level school I attended, St. Leonard's Secondary School. I was so passionate about my Nigerian experience, and I found out that a number of British students did not know next to nothing about Nigeria, and I wanted to let them know about this particular experience. And even as an A-level student, my cultural heritage was so vital, and I remember this particular experience brought a lot of changes to that particular school. First of all, books, on diverse cultures were introduced to the library, and shortly after that, paintings depicting lives from other lands were also introduced. I want to say that the African experience is one that has actually served as a base and has launched me into the multicultural counseling context. And now I quickly go on to bring up what we may take on for this particular 15th inaugural lecture a definition for counseling. But let me say that diverse definitions do exist, but one that I have found wholesome and one that is applicable to counseling regardless of where it is practiced is that it is a helping relationship and the therapeutic alliance which is the meeting of the client who has a need and who needs to be helped in the professional counseling relationship and bringing that on board with the professional counselor, the meeting and that space where they're able to identify patterns and solutions in the way ahead and identifying how to resolve the concerns in fostering professional and personal growth. The, chance, the, the counselor in this instance is designated and seen as a professional helper. And this is the definition given by Capuzzi and Gross in 2013. And what is multicultural counseling? I want to also reference Nugget 2013. It's counseling that takes cognizance of racial and ethnic diversities and identifying spirituality, abilities, social class, everything that forms the reality and worldview of a client. And so culture matters, values matter, cultural dispositions are important, and of course, the perception of meaning, all of these are actually brought to bear. And we have noted the title that the word transcendence features. I remember when this was first announced, a number of persons meeting me around felt, what kind 
of a title is that? Sounds so philosophical. What is this thing about lengthening cords and strengthening stakes? And it just became something that everybody was beginning to talk about. And that is what we will be uncovering in the course of this particular lecture. It is the deconstruction of a process where counselors that have been trained, a number of counselors, when counseling first became a profession in Nigeria, were trained in the West. On arrival back in Nigeria, they were not able to get it to function right in a situated way with Nigerian clients. And so a number of mentors that I had and renowned counselors and academics had to begin to find ways of creating and carving out meanings. And the cultural caveat was really one that was going to be able to put an inroad into counseling. And I couldn't agree with Antonio Machado, a Spanish poet, 1912, when he said, there are no parts anywhere. Parts are made by walking. And if we do not believe that, just begin to go in and out of the bush. Very soon, a path begins to emerge. And when it emerges, we are able to identify a place for people to begin to walk. And that is what happened with the advent of multicultural counseling. And that created a platform for counselors that were trained with the Western counseling theories. They were able to now make it tailor-made rights for the Nigerian client to begin to find meaning. These were the things that triggered and opened up new trajectories for the practice of counseling with Nigerian and African client as my work helped to define the terrain in exploring what I call the cultural cosmos. It was delving into the cultural cosmos, traversing a privileged path of leadership. Because in the course of my journey, I found also that counseling was not restricted to the counseling room. Counseling is relevant, even in the purple corridors, as I love to refer to the governance platform of Covenant University. You look everywhere, we are in a royal academy, even the chairs we sit on, purple. And purple is also talking about raising distinguished personalities for leadership. And so looking at the intersection of my training and looking at the vital strands, we are noting that we would need to begin to look at the core of today's lecture, the 15th inaugural lecture, which is titled Lengthening Chords and Strengthening Stakes, Leadership Praxis and Transcendence in Counseling Practice. It does sound, it sounds actually like a mouthful, but all that this is bringing to bear is the intersection of my work in counseling and leadership, and not just leadership, the practice of leadership. I recall two nights ago, my dad said to me, that word praxis, I'm not familiar with that word praxis. It certainly sounds like a new word. And I said, well, daddy, I came across that word for the first time myself in about 2014. And praxis just means practice. It's actually practice indeed, not just having a title, but practicing counseling. And quickly I go on to just mentioning my academic contributions. I want to say I recognize the seminal inputs of my mentor of blessed memory, Professor Tunde Ikpaye. He's not here today, but I'm glad to say that his son, Ayokunle Ikpaye, is right here. It was under him just like a number of us in this room, I see Mr. Muyewa Yeleke, Dr. Adejumo is also there, Dr. Professor Adekeye is right there, and quite a number 
who are coming from that particular ancestry. And I want to thank him for all that he put me and set me right on the right track. I was actually starting out to look at the subject matter of sleep and dreams. And I wonder where that would have led me today if he did not, after I had defended my proposal, and he said, no, I can see Professor Emola right in the room and he's smiling right now. God bless you, sir. One of my mentors as well. And he said, no, this is the future. And that talks about leadership. And so looking at the research areas, I've had to go into areas of sexual stereotyping and occupational decision making and looking at what exactly defines career choice. Is it gendered? And finding out that it's not about having male or female traits, but having what you call androgynous traits, whatever would bring masculinity with femininity traits in every particular context, these two are vital. And then research in the area of children's involvement in home tasks and looking also at research in behavior disposition of Nigerian children. It's not just to say that this is who we are, how are Nigerian children disposed? How do they perceive maternal acceptance or rejection? There are typologies of this from other contexts all over the world. Is there what you would call cultural factors mitigating as to what you would call the disposition of Nigerian children? And how does this affect maternal employment status? These were my early work right for the establishment of a platform. I was very early on dissatisfied with limiting counseling practice to the school environment. We had quite a number of guidance counselors in schools. May I say, however, that the testing component and the measurement component that would define how counselors are able to apply counseling theories is not exactly robust within the guidance counseling curriculum and that will be found more in psychology. Today you would find a number of guidance counselors defining their own career path as counseling psychologists. However, we're looking also at the current contributions, going also to looking at collaborations with persons in the medical field, looking at substance abuse, substance use, and the prevalence in universities as well as secondary schools. The results have also informed a number of policies, even as we speak. And then recently going into the Ebola virus disease, knowledge, attitude, and practices in Lagos and Ogun State, one of the research clusters in Covenant University that I'm privileged to be a member of, led by Professor Gbola Hon-Oni. May I also say that I cut my academic teeth also with his input, particularly in the area of research. My professional contributions, which I would say are groundbreaking, it's not just enough to be part of a community or a committee of counselors. What exactly have I brought on board? What is original? It's my disputing of the definition of the extended family system. All over, up until my research and explorations, the extended family sufficed in defining the Nigerian family system. In the text of the paper, I've gone into depth in identifying the global family system, talking about the matrilineal and all the other family systems. But my major contribution here is looking at what exactly I would call extensivity studies. The extended family defines the family broken down, looking at 
what I have also defined as the cobweb system and the cobweb context. You have right there the client right in the middle. The client in counseling for the Nigerian context does not come into counseling alone. In the extended family system, that may happen. But what makes the Nigerian case different is the fact that there are a number of invisible multitudes. Looking at the diagram right on the screen, you would find out that the client is right there in the middle, cushioned. However, there are extensions. When you talk about extended, you're talking about several degrees removed. For the Nigerian client, and I want to say for a number of African nationals, you will also find this as the reality. You do not have, for example, in the real sense, persons who are second, third, fourth, 20th cousins, 70 times removed, so to say, everybody is either a brother or a sister or a parent. I can't ever forget a joke my husband shared with me. He said somebody went abroad and his and the stepbrother came to visit. And then he introduced, she introduced the stepbrother to her white English husband and said, meet my stepbrother. And this brother who is actually, in terms of Western definition, step, said, permit my use of Yoruba, I don't speak it very well. He said, oh, womi, ti, 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 okwemi, half brother. <laughs> and he packed all his bags and went back home because he felt very insulted. How would you call me half brother? As far as my parenting and parentage is concerned, we are brothers knitted together. We share a common ancestry. You are my brother. And so today, work into extensivity studies is about this cobweb concept. And this actually defines who the Nigerian is. And then you go into counseling, Western counseling theories have not taken or did not take this into consideration. And my major contribution is disputing the fact that the African family, the Nigerian family that I studied, is not in actual fact extended. It is actually extensive. And so by reason of this research, that other dimension of familyhood, which is the extensive family, came into being from this research efforts. <laughs> Getting back now, <coughs> excuse me, to the lecture for today, the concept of lengthening chords. What are chords? The institution of the family, and this begins to provide some link between counseling and leadership, parenthood, child rearing practices, youth engagements, and then we begin to see the cosmetology and the extensivity of the Nigerian family. It's actually crisscross and very expansive. What are the stakes? Understanding what stakes mean strengthens, a stake strengthens. The concept of looking at nationhood as being a tent, and then you have the stakes driven right to the earth. And so leadership development is one of those stakes. Education is a stake, and governance is a stake. And now the concept of leadership praxis. It was Robin Sharma in 2010 who stated, you do not need a title to be a leader. And right here in Covenant University, right from inception, it's not about the titles that you bear, it's about the contributions you make. We've constantly heard that from the Chancellor, Land Covenant University, Landmark University. Leadership practice goes beyond being a title leader. It's not about your being nominated, not about your being appointed, it's about service, it's about what a leader renders, it's about the act of leading and not about a celebration of that position. According to Dr. David Oyedepo, 
Leadership is not in the titles you wear, but in the values you bear. And so our values must be well pronounced so that everyone can identify you with them, not occupying a position, but making outstanding contributions. And going on from here, we have also find out that Max Dupree also mentioned that leadership is more of an art, a belief, a condition, than a set of things to do. It's not about what you list that will be done, but what is actually done. And so we can say that it's transiting from theory to practice. It's in the practice. Transcendence in counseling practice brings together the evolution in counseling and identifying a bridge between the theoretical paradigms of Western counseling and transcending that and moving into the cultural reality of clients and looking at work that had been done in Mohamed 1989, Obayo 98 and 2003, it goes beyond Western contraptions of the therapeutic relationship between the counselor and the client. The necessary and sufficient conditions prescribed for counseling in the global north embody meaning and formation of worldviews, and this is the transcendence. So we begin to look straight away at strengthening the stakes of leadership development and look at leadership in its entirety. There's a lot of leadership, like I said, everywhere, but it's not been enough to bring substance, to go with it, and that reminds me so much. Like the poem by T. Courage, water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. And so we could also say leadership, leadership everywhere. So many titles you put on, you click your mouse, Google search brings out thousands and thousands of references on leadership. You also hit on Amazon, you find out several books on leadership. Why has this not made a difference? Prentice defines leadership as the discipline of deliberately exerting special influence within a group to move it towards a goal of beneficial permanence. And this fulfills the group's real need. It's a 1961 definition, but one that is still so relevant today. When we look at what leadership means, building consensus, being able to drive judgment and bringing together principles, courage and audacity, and actions of oratory and communication. And I couldn't agree with Singe more. In 1999, he stated that if any idea about leadership has inspired organizations for thousands of years, it is the ability of a leader to be able to hold a picture of a shared future that people envision. And as we catch a picture of what we seek to create and what leaders bring to the fore, Tichi also talks about that the most important assignment for leaders in the 21st century is the challenge of creating more leaders. And going on into looking and what happens here in Covenant University, charity has to begin at home. The Chancellor of Covenant University, in enunciating the Covenant University vision and the role of the university in turning out the needed human resources for nation states in the 21st century, talks about widespread conflict in Africa against the backdrop of poverty illiteracy and weak systems of governance. And so we are able to understand the relevance of stakes and also the relevance of cords, strengthening stakes and lengthening cords. This is the main gist of this lecture. When we talk, therefore, about leadership development, particularly with reference to the Covenant University system, we're looking at intentional learning skills and in Covenant University, listening to the Vice Chancellor's welcome address, every student upon graduation 
graduates earning a degree, diploma certificate in leadership. And so leadership here is intentional. And it's about developing leaders. Patrick Auer, president of Ashesi University, Ghana, had to say that the problem and the question of transformation in Africa is actually a question of leadership. The way and manner we educate leaders is so fundamental to the African continent. And so universities will need to take this on board as we look at what the outcome of leadership development is. Right here in Covenant University, it has given expression to our visionary mandate. And this has actually stood us out. Our graduates are making waves in several contexts of the world today. Leadership development outcomes from the visionary and leadership development drive of none other than the Chancellor Covenant University, who continues to lead with all veracity and intentionality, brings a lot to bear in being at the vanguard of this particular move. Strengthening the stakes of governance is what we'll be looking at next, distribution of authority and functions among units and determining how structures should operate. Recognizing that organizations work by defined structures, rules, processes, and interaction. The act of governing or giving effect to decisions, actions, and processes is what is being described here. Governance, whether corporate, polit political, or educational, in my own thought and explorations, we need to be mindful of the vehicle of leadership that propels it into action. And this is the relevance of the stake of governance. The recent saga in South Africa with respect to former President Zuma, the case of former President Mugabe of Zimbabwe, and the, two, the 2015 case of former President Blaise Kampore, Burkina Faso, are clear indications of failed political leadership in Africa. What Africans will need, therefore, are leaders who can envision and birth transformation, leaders who would rise up like biblical Nehemiahs and say, we are ready to rebuild the falling walls. And that is what it means to strengthen stakes and lengthen cords. May I, at this point, also mention something that I picked up from Tabo Mbeki and something that has actually left me with creative dissatisfaction over the years. And he said Africans will continue to be objects of compassion and contempt until such a time when they rise up and become demonstrable masters of their own destiny. We are always looking around, finding out the grass is greener on the other side. Someone said, how long, and it was Professor Bologo, how long do we continue to consume? When can we begin to create our own? And that is what we have been constantly challenged to do in the Covenant University context. The crucial challenge of leadership and governance. And this is with reference to the Nigerian context. Putting it against the background of leadership development, there is a serious lack of preparatory process for persons who attain leadership positions at all levels. And the educational sector, whatever level, primary to tertiary, is not left out. Noting what I said earlier, that this process of leadership development will need to be intentional. And intentionality goes with training, exposure, leadership capacity building. And these are the things that Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, has put together for nations to be mindful of, organizations to be mindful of, if they are to be aware of the process of decline. And this has been captured. A vital question, how do we begin to prevent the decline? Put in place governance mechanisms and structures via legislation and structural frameworks. 
This is quite a demanding process, and this is where the university comes in. Our departments of political science, our departments of public administration would be bringing a lot to bear here, and I'm sure very soon departments of leadership development studies, like we have here at the diploma and certificate levels in Covenant University. Introduction of effective capacity building programs designed to build and drive effective leadership at all levels. However, these programs must thoroughly be measurable and possibly have key performance indicators. And so we are able to see exactly where we are. May I acknowledge the presence of a mentor, most respected mentor, Professor Peter Okebukolasa, who chairs the <laughs> NUC Committee for revitalizing and repositioning the university system. And at every point, a scorecard is brought up. How far have we gone? What do we have to still attain? How many more things do we need to? And everyone on their toes to get all of these things done. And always taking the lead Another major area in terms of what we are able to put in place, bridging the gender divide is very crucial. I want to recognize the contribution of our dear mama. Right here in this hall, I remember 1st February 2005, having been announced as the second substantive vice chancellor. I broke protocol and I asked everyone to rise up and give a standing ovation for our dear mama. For the leadership examples, contributions, relevance of womanhood, and all that we continue to draw, and the fact that women may never ever have a chance not being able to define and also make their contributions as clearly, and be role models also for others. And she said, women, whether subtly or vociferously, have always been a tremendous power in the destiny of the world. And in her example, I see that very clearly. As we move on, the challenges of the digital divide, and also noting that the relevance of women given a lot of agency in Covenant University, we have the faculty women advance, inspired by God, and it was an initiative to help female faculty maximize their potentials through groundbreaking research, capacity building, training and outreach program. And this is intentional efforts also to bridge that gender divide. As we go on, we look at also strengthening the stakes of education, the role of education specifically. This platform, the university education, is really important. And I cannot forget ever John Newman, a Methodist priest who described the university as a place of concourse. Students coming from every quarter in search of every kind of knowledge a place of inquiry where, it, where inquiry is pushed forward and where discoveries are verified. And just note what he goes on to say, where rashness is rendered innocuous and error is exposed. And this is what the academy is to do, even in the 21st century, even today, the 6th of April, 2018. And this is done by the collision of mind with mind and knowledge with knowledge. A place where the professor is eloquent, a place where he's a missionary, a place where he's a preacher, a place where he displays his science in the most complete, most winning form, pouring it forth with zeal, with enthusiasm, and lightening up his own love in the breasts of his hearers. I want to say this was what got me into academia. And we are gradually losing touch with this, looking at the Nigerian university system. 
in eloquence, in terms of passion, in terms of delivery, in terms of being able to be co-creators with the students. The academic leader is a leader who is able to inspire new search and new quests. And again, noting that this is the seed of wisdom. We look at the World Bank reports for education for 2018, and we note that there's quite a lot to do in terms of making sure that students are really learning and identifying the process of preparing students to be able to learn and creating the right environment that will inspire and stimulate learning. I want to thank God for the environment we have here in Covenant University, and I appreciate the Chancellor for the vision that has given birth to this. I have referred to the state of the nation, quoting the Chancellor, not so far-fetched, and in looking through all, what are the future pathways that we will need to begin to drive? The future parts are vital. And we'll need to begin to look at how to construct leadership practices by defining new leadership programs. Right here in Covenant University, this is already instituted across different levels, specifically working towards models of schools of leadership and governance, where people are taught the rudiments of leadership and they acquire leadership skills. And this is part of what we are constantly and right now exploring in the new leadership paradigms for Africa research cluster in Covenant University. There are phenomenal insights as we look through all of this. And may I begin to talk about what is happening as I bring my lecture to a close in the leadership observatory of Covenant University. And let me say, that this brand of leadership is talking about totally God-dependent, people-centered, palpable passion, and empathy drawn from scriptures. And the Leadership Observatory, working with the Covenant University Leadership Research Cluster, came up with what we have called the Oyedeporian leadership postulations. And what are the characteristics of this? As I begin to roll this out, you can begin to catch a picture of how this is demonstrated. The Chancellor, sir, we never consulted you before this happened. But we are busy right in the Leadership Observatory of African Leadership Development Center. What do leaders do? Leaders should lead, professors should profess, and everyone take on board what they do. The Oyedeporian language is evocative, poignant, compelling, audacious, appealing, and driving. It speaks change and liberation, and serves as a vehicle to translate and transmit the vision. Proficient and demonstrable language skill is a tool for stirring up action. You cannot sit under the teachings or the charges of the Chancellor, Dr. David Yodeko, and not be stirred up to take action. Africa is in dire need of leaders that would appeal to the mentality, the spirits of the people and steer them to action. A skill for driving results and for actualizing vision. Attention is the currency of the language of leadership. And this is validated in the works of Heifers and Linsky, 2002. The leader as visionary. The leader in this brand of leadership must have clear articulation of vision, compelling modesty, humility, fanatical drive, and tenacity for generating sustainable result. It has to be inclusive and optimistic, and ideally, the leader must personify the vision. And we also have another defining 
caveat here, the leader as philosopher, think, envisioning new parts, excavations of new truths, emerging truths and envisioning what the future holds. Here in Covenant University, we are constantly being admonished not to live in the present, not to live in the past. I remember when Covenant University came out very successful in our very first accreditation exercise. The chancellor standing right here, he said, move from accreditation success to distinction. You haven't arrived, move. There is a future somewhere. The leader as strategist. This is what is the hallmark of the Oyedeporian strategy and postulate. The future, imagining the future, charging the people, engaging current realities and the hallmarks for this brand of leadership. Under leadership praxis, resourcefulness and exemplary leadership that drives towards defined targets. Every player in the field of sports, according to him, is a potential star, but what each player invests in terms of training, service, and dedication and sacrifice is what makes a play player a star. As I bring this work to conclusion, the Oyedeporian postulations are vital for us to take back to the laboratory of leadership beyond the observatory to begin to see how this can be instituted, not just in Covenant University, but across the entire world. The current theoretical postulations that we have started just this way, and we must become creators of new knowledge in breaking new grounds. Again, may I say that this is encapsulated in the body of Christ's model of leadership. And as we bring this all together, we are beginning to find tentacles of extensivity, the entire body compactly joined together as we have in Ephesians 4.16 is this model, everyone a leader. The Oyedeporian model and postulation of leadership is extensivity in leadership, raising leaders at all levels. May I say that in terms of my personal leadership construction, I have come with two definitions of leadership in all my forays as a lifetime student in the leadership observatory of Dr. David Oyedeko, that leadership at the end of the day is the totality of what makes anything exemplary. And leadership is the continuous pursuit of excellence. And what have I engaged? Excellence, continuous drive and commitment, capacity building, hard work, benchmarking, legacy building, and continuous improvement. In all of this, I remember very clearly Joseph, Joshua, I beg your pardon, in the book of Joshua 14.12, Caleb at 85 stated, as yet I'm strong this day as I was when Moses sent me, and, and my strength was then, even so my strength is now. Right now I stand here on privileged grounds of Covenant University at 58, matching up in our current context. I most respectfully say, sir, my eyes are set on um, upward ways. Looking up, I see that there are still many more mountains and territories to take. Sir, give me more mountains. As I bring this lecture to a close, I want to note the Chancellor, sir, that the first responsibility of a leader is to define the reality. I have tried in some ways to have done that in bringing the entirety of my lecture, my research, my current involvements here together. And the last is to say thank you. And sir, I say thank you. And in between, according to Max Dupree, 
the leader is a servant. At the end of the day, in my forays, in teaching, my forays in research, my forays in academics, my forays in the various platforms I've been privileged to serve. It is not about the office. At the end of the day, it's not about the perks of the office. It is about service. And so the Chancellor, sir, it has been a privilege to present the 15th inaugural lecture of Covenant University, lengthening cords and strengthening stakes, leadership practice, and transcendence in counseling practice. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. I'd like to quickly acknowledge most profoundly, appreciate God for all that he has done. Talking about the extensive family, I want to appreciate all that he inspired in bringing all of these ideas and inspiration to bring this on board and the environment he has, he has given us here in Covenant University. Where would I be today if not for God's superintendence over me and my family? And it is to God I return all the praise today. I forever remain God's handmaiden, his lawful captive, committed to his will, and I give him all the glory and all the praise. My profound gratitude goes to the Chancellor of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo. Thank you so much, sir the visionary of this university for being the prime custodian of this celebrated vision of Covenant University and for entrusting me with the privileges that I've had for service. I celebrate, sir, your leadership virtues and all that has continued to be inspired. And your school, your leadership academy, is where I again pledge today to be a lifetime student and I thank God for the liberation mandate. I express deep gratitude to my dear mother, Ma, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo. Today is a very important day on the calendar of this church, and I want to thank our mama and our papa for being here today. Our mama remains for me a stabilizing force, exuding radiance of God's glory, and a validating presence a force for beauty and the right words all through the years. Ma, your life has continued to be an inspiration, impact beyond measure. I thank the vice chancellor, members of management, esteemed members of Senate. I have had quite a number of pages, as you would find in the text, very lengthy acknowledgement and that is in line with my extensive family. I look all across the hall, tentacles spreading everywhere. This is a representation. And so, as I recognize several persons today, I may not be able to mention everyone, but I've taken time to put some things down. Recognize today Professor Peter Okebukola, erstwhile Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, a great mentor, and all the flow of inspiration, validating contributions to the university system, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but globally. Thank you also for your extensive family support. Thank you, sir. Professor Grace Alele Williams, Professor Joy Ogu, Professor Placid Njoku is right here. Whenever I listen to Professor Njoku, he represents the academy vintage Professor Njoko, I appreciate your mentorship. And on a day like today, I recognize again Professors Ikmaye, Professor Aki Odebumi, Professor Oguremi, Professor Titi Hassan, he's right here, one of my mentors as a young academic, cutting my teeth in research, 
understanding the rudiments of how to go about defense of PhD thesis and other things with respect to the postgraduate school, I want to appreciate you all. Pioneer Vice Chancellor of Covenant University and also the third substantive Vice Chancellor and a dear Vice Chancellor Professor Atayero driving this vision with all tenacity. Well done, thank you. And then today I'd like to recognize all my students past and present. I'm so excited that a number of you are right here. Kings and Queens, students in Covenant University, graduates, are Eagles, Pathfinders of Landmark University, students from the University of Illori. I want to appreciate all that God continues to do and thank you for making the classroom a very exciting place to spend quite a number of hours and for giving us time to create new knowledge and new learning. I want to recognize Professor Nnamdi Ekeanyawo, among them Dr. Abimbola, Dr. Kamalafe, the Registrar, Covenant University, graduate of 2006, now registrar, Moyewa Oyeleke, I want to appreciate all of you. I want to appreciate members of our family who are here. May I recognize my dear parents. I remember several years ago, planning for the inaugural lecture, looking forward to it, having been inspired by witnessing inaugural lectures of Professor Ogurami and Professor Ikmaye, and looking forward to mine, and I really desire that my parents will be around. Today, they are right here. I want to recognize them. Thank you so much, Mommy and Daddy. Thank you for all that you provided. It was really tough growing up in the house of Sir Frank, and Marian Imohome. Tough, I was really drilled. It was not easy at all, but today it has paid off. It was always about go and read your books, go and read your books. I received my first charge for learning when I was asked to take charge of the home of five other siblings. And even at the age of 10, I started to lead in that home. And failure was never anything that would be condoned in that house. I want to thank you for all that you have given. I'm most privileged to have been blessed by my husband of 28 years and four days, talking about engineer Tokes O'Brien. Where I talk about stakes and cords of leadership, he refers to vectors of leadership. I want to thank him for all his love, and I remember he said on the 15th of August, he said, I'll be attending your inaugural. And with the spirit of just men made perfect, he is attending this inaugural. Your values were never commonplace, always seeking out viable grounds for souls on the mission field. And today I want to thank God for all the members of the full gospel who are represented here, the Fija Bees are here. I want to thank you for being here. The Olati Regos are also here. Thank you for being here. Sweet memories of our time together will linger and remain forever green, my dear Tokes. God bless you forever. Today, I celebrate God in praise for the wonderful children he has blessed us with, fulfilling the scriptures, Psalm 144, 12, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youths, our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. And Psalm 127, 4 and 5, as arrows are in the hands of mighty men, so are the children of thy youth. I'm blessed to be a mother of two wonderful children that have continued to bring me joy and give me rest on all fronts. I thank God for your love. I thank God for your support. Toluwani Obaya and her brother Joshua have been pillars of strength, tenacity, purpose, and succor. They are testimonials of God's faithfulness 
as I see them manifest his glory in their walks and work every day. I enjoy rest on all sides. Thank you for being pillars. Thank you for being able to stand through all that we have been through as a family. I appreciate God also for my wonderful siblings. They're not able to be here today, but I thank God for them. They're as listed, the entire Obanyo family, the entire Full Gospel family, a number of persons, Kukoyi family, Oshawas, the Beecrofts, members from the church, the Dickens Assembly, Dickin, Lanre, Olaleye, my hospitality service group, all the members of staff in all the offices who have ever worked. I can see a number of family from Landmark University all here. Mr. Lajide, Mr. Gbade, Dr. Jadiron. I want to say that it's been a privilege to present the 15th inaugural lecture. Dear students of Covenant University, the Chancellor, sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Please, a round of applause one more time for our guest lecturer for the <laughs> inaugural lecture of today. Let's make it louder. And thank you all. Please, let's get seated. I must say that um, that was an exhaustive, explorative, input on the subject of counseling and leadership development. Thank you for a job well done, and God bless you. I believe we have quite a number of things to
which culminates in some skilled leadership in political level. Living our life to chance, we have no chance. I want to believe that veritable leadership institutes have to rise to address this challenging situation that we're confronted with. And I want to make this special demand on the lecture of today to explore how best to accelerate leadership development at all levels and at all costs. But there is nothing of value without a cost. Attend to it. No matter how anointed you are in church ministry, in the ministry of the gospel, if you don't have the required skill to get any task done, you'll be struggling with it forever. I want to believe that this coming generation will not tread on the track of chance like ours. The leader you find in the political scene, they are products of the leadership quality in the polity, the people, because they are co coming from the people. They are not coming from anywhere else. I come from the people. You can't define your goal. How do you get there? You have no strategies on how to accomplish it. How do you accomplish it? Only committed learners ever become great leaders. It's time to respond to this urgent need lest we sell off our future and posterity. Where there are so much crisis, why do we have so much crisis in Africa? The level of leadership development. I want to pray that the coming generation will not go through the stress that we are going through now where people don't know where they are going, and they want to give direction as to where we are going. If you live your life to a visitor in a wildlife park, you are running a risk. He doesn't know the place. He doesn't know the terrain. So he leads you into the den of a lion without knowing. That's a general thing. You see companies go up and companies run down. There is no leadership. There is no adequate skill development on how to build startups, how to sustain it. It won't drop on anybody. Skill does not answer to prayers. Skill answers to cultivation of required know-how in getting it done. We will get it done. Nigeria is coming out. Nigeria will go up. Our story will change. We will not lose our youth to the foreign land. They will be here to join hands in building it. And we all have a duty to start from home. Let's start from home. Let's start from home. Let's start from home. Let's start cultivating appropriate values, appropriate virtues from home. Don't let's get tired doing it. It's a stone wall that's standing between us and our promised land, but as we keep throwing the sledgehammer at a point, the wall must give way. But we have to keep throwing, not waiting. The stone wall will not come down, except we keep impacting on it, necessary forces to bring it down. Once again, thank you for coming and being part of this great inaugural lecture. And congratulations one more time for a job well done. Thank you all. At this point, we'd like to invite Professor Chris Awunuga to please come and move a word of thanks.
the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo, the Vice President, Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor, Pastor Faith Oyedepo. Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. First of all, I would like to give thanks to God for making today possible. Because without God, we would not have been able to hold this event. He gave us the grace to hold it. He gave us the privilege to hold it. So to him be all the glory. And I want to thank our Chancellor, sir, for receiving this vision and running with it. And this has provided a very wonderful platform for us to share knowledge to the growth of Covenant University. And I also want to thank our mama, for, uh, Vice President, Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, and esteemed member of the Board of Regents. Thank you very much, ma, for your work in moving this university forward and for coming to attend this inaugural lecture. And I also want to thank every member of the Board of Regents of Covenant University that is present here at this lecture. Thank you for taking time, your busy schedule, to be here this evening. We appreciate you. And I want to thank all the mentors of our inaugural lecturer today who are also here. I am sure that you enjoyed listening to your product this evening. So it's a very wonderful thing to have. Thank you for the contributions you have made into her growth as an academic, and thank you for being here to attend this inaugural lecture. We give you all the thanks. And we also want to thank the speaker's extensive family. She talked of the extensive family, so that the African family is not an expanded family, it's not it's the extensive family that we have. So we thank God for the speaker's children. Thank you very much for the support you continue to give to mommy. And as you do so, your own children will also bless you in Jesus' name. And we thank God for the speaker's parents who have also taken time to be here this evening. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. We appreciate your coming. And we also want to thank all the friends of Covenant University who are here this evening. Thank you for the support you continue to give to this university. And thank you for also finding the time to be here this evening for this lecture. We hope that you will continue to provide your support for the growth of this institution. And I also want to thank all the members of the press that are here today. Thank you for coming and thank you for the objective coverage of this lecture this evening. And I also want to thank our students, the kings and queens in Hebron. Thank you very much for attending this lecture and thank you for comporting yourself in the accepted way. May God bless you in Jesus' name. So once more, thank you all for coming, and God bless. The Chancellor, uh, we have a very long list here. Please permit us, we'll just recognize a few persons. But all of us who have come to be part of this inaugural lecture, we deeply appreciate you. May I recognize again the parents of our inaugural lecturer here present, <laughs> Sir and uh, Lady Imokweme. You're welcome, Sir and Ma. You're welcome. I'd like to also recognize uh, Joshua and Tuluani who are here present, the children of our inaugural lecturer. We can never say this too much. We have here present the former executive secretary of NUC. One of us here present, Professor Peter Okebukola. You're welcome again, sir. We also have here the Vice Chancellor of Landmark University and a team. He came with a team and the wife 
can we recognize Professor Adeni Olayonju? You're welcome. You're welcome. We also have our former director of uh, quality assurance in NUC, our former vice chancellor, Professor Placid Njoku. Can we recognize Professor Placid Njoku? You're welcome, sir. We have the president and members of the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International. The president and the members who are present. Please, can you stand for recognition? You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, let me just mention a few names, uh, but because of time, we cannot go through all of these. Pastor Dickner's uh, Nia Bicroft, they are here present. You're welcome. We like to recognize Professor Hazan and uh, Modupe from Tai Shorin University. You're welcome. We also have here from Bayes University, Dr. Suleiman Banabas. Dr. Suleiman Banabas. We have from OAU, Professor Taiwo Olorotumi from OAU. We also have uh, Dr. Chris Nikohis from Samuel Adebuega University. We also have uh, Dr. Oluwale Kukoyi, the medical director of uh, Ace Medicare here present. You're welcome, sir. We'd like to also recognize Professor Israel Adu, president, NIAS here present. And we also have a council member here, Professor Akin, a council member of NIAS. Professor Rotimi Olatunji is also here, the Dean Lasso School of Communication. You're welcome. We'd like to also recognize Professor Titilayo Hazan, a teacher or a lecturer from OAU. OOU, rather. OOU is from OAU. You are welcome, sir. We also have a Dr. Abimbola Oluremi from uh, Uye Federal University. You are welcome. We have Professor Chidi Uwehu here present, Dean. Faculty of Natural Science, Godfrey Oke University. We also have Professor Ekeawi has also been recognized. We have here present Dr. Mrs. Nkiko from Elizabeth University. Pastor Shay Macaulay, a former chaplain, is also here. We have uh, Professor Olubukola Kufuroji, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Bell's University of Technology. We also have here our former registrar of that university, Bell's University of Mrs. Badebo. You're welcome, ma. You're welcome, ma. We also have here from University of Ibadan, the HOD Sociology, Professor Ifanyi. You're welcome. You're welcome. We also have here the past president representing the Society of Engineers, Engineer Ademola Olorufemi. You're welcome, sir. Our pressmen are here in the house. We want to recognize all our pressmen who have come. And just like has been said, we expect that the coverage of this 15th inaugural lecture shall be such that we shall hear it all over this country because it is worthwhile. Immediately after this, we're going to be having a cocktail. All our guests and Senate members are please invited just across, opposite us here, our Center for Learning Resources. Please, we like our guests and our members of Senate to please join us as we have that uh, cocktail. At this point, I would like to invite the Vice Chancellor as we get in close to close this ceremony. The Vice Chancellor. You will all agree with me that as it was said, it was a thought-provoking and worthwhile lecture. Can we give another round of applause for the lecturer? Of the day? It is on this gracious note, I will please ask everybody to rise as I most humbly invite the Chancellor of Covenant University for the closing benediction. Chancellor, sir. Shall we bow our heads for prayers? Lord Jesus, Thank you for a great day. Thank you for a great event. Thank you for bringing all of us that are here safely. And thank you for taking us back to our various destinations safely. Thank you for the thoughts we are taking away from here. Thank you for the ripple effect, the positive effect of these thoughts. And thank you for a great, great nation, Nigeria. Thank you for moving us forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our lecturer, the inaugural lecturer of today for the strength and the grace we have given her to deliver this lecture. Now, receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now we pray for the remaining part of this program that we take the lead. And when we conclude and everybody's on his way home, he will guide us back to our respective destinations. To all the lovers of today's inaugural lecture, all the lovers of their family, be rewarded in return. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Shall we share the goodness together? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Please, in our standing position, we'll be taking the Covenant University anthem, and after that, we'll be having the procession in reverse order. See you, Ban. the procession in reverse order. Thank you, thank you, thank you.